I believe that we're going to see children that are traumatized when this is all over. And we need to, as educators and caregivers and people in the community, be ready to do trauma-informed care because we will have children who we don't, that don't know how to deal with this. They didn't know well to begin with. Self-regulation is not a good thing these days, but it's going to be really hard. You know, what you've said so resonates about um, what we hear and what the data is starting to show. The State Department of Health just came out with an update for mental health um, because of the COVID, and they estimate that um, one out of every four young adults has had ideas of suicide and or tried suicide. Um, and that starts early because kids absorb the stress that's around them. Mm -hmm. And as their parents struggle with paying bills, do I have a job? Is someone going to get sick? Is grandma in the hospital? You know, all of those things, kids are little sponges, as mm -hmm. you know. And mm -hmm. so it's great to hear that Partners for Early Learning has been a lifeline, not only helping parents learn how to parent under normal challenging circumstances of life, yeah. but then we have this whole messy basket of an uncertain ongoing crisis a crisis without a known end yes. that adds layer of stress that affects the whole family. Yeah. And also that your organization is wise to, it has been very wise to not only think about the social emotional learning needs of the parents and their kiddos and the young kids, but also food, toilet paper. If you, yeah. you know, if you don't know if you're going to eat tomorrow, it's hard to think about parenting, you know, yeah. in a different way today. Yeah, it is. And it's really, um, you know, Maslow always, you know, in his research always showed that if you are insecure in your living situation, in your food, if you feel it fear, there's no way this whole idea of self-actualization and wow, life is good and I can go on. No, you're right down there at the, at the place where you're saying, I don't know if I'm going to be alive tomorrow or I don't know if I have a home. The same with evictions. I mean, our families are all in now with the unemployment and that all, you know, falling apart. It's a terrifying time for them. I look at us because we don't have that economic, I mean, we're somewhat affected, but not like our families are. And I look at my daughter and her husband and their family isn't, they both have secure, you know, places. And I think the difference with between them and, and the fa other families that we're using is just, are dealing with is just scary to me because our girls are worried my girls are living in a very stable place where they know they have three meals a day and everything. And they still will say to mom, when is the disease going to end? You know, will we ever get to see our friends? Will we, you know, and yeah. So well, I'm so glad that we can meet with our families. I have a picture on my phone that uh, my home visitor sent me yesterday of her, one of her little boys sitting, doing work with her on the phone, and he's working on the stuff that she sent him. And he's saying, I love you, Miss Carrie. <laughs> you know, and it just, it's a place of security for them. And it really has been a good thing for us. I wish we had more of it going on in our community. Thank you. We have parents that will call her during the week and say, I know it's not my time to be with you, but I just need to talk. You know, and I've thought about that. She talks to many of our parents four and five times a week besides her time that she has with them one-on-one. -on -one. And that's so powerful because they, many of them have no family in this area. No one to say to them, you're doing okay. It'll be all right. What can I help you with? You know, that kind of thing. And I just think it's essential, like you said, that blanket of wrapping, that place in which we say, we care about you. We value your needs as a human being and we want to be of support.